here at Vivid Racing, we've got something special, something new and totally different than we typically do. It is not a supercar, it is not electric, and it doesn't drift. On top of that, it has got less horsepower than your mom's minivan. We've got the 2022 Hyundai Elantra N. This features the two liter turbo with the DCT transmission and a ton of cool features. It's got some pretty awesome body features from the factory. Uh, you can see it does have factory side skirts with the end trim. Overall, I think it's pretty cool. Definitely something different from the KDM market. What do you think, Yori? I really like it. It's a front wheel drive and it has like upgraded brake and 19 inch wheels look great. Dang, those are 19s. That is yeah. pretty awesome. More than anything, I'm excited to see what it can do performance wise. I've seen quite a bit online about this car in stock trim. I know the DCT is supposed to be pretty good. On top of that, I'm excited for some of the factory features. These do have kind of a factory burble pops and bangs when put into the end mode. So that's gonna be pretty cool to check out along with just the entire end integration within the factory infotainment menu and, and all of the sport settings that you can apply. Personally, I'm not really into KDM vehicles, but this is pretty looking promising. What? I really wanna drive it and I really wanna see how it drives on the road. But why is it here? It is here for a VR tuned application. We're gonna be applying our VR tuned V2 tuning box with the Bluetooth features. So yeah, we're looking to, uh, to increase some pretty good performance and, and definitely improve horsepower and torque. Wow, I'm super excited. Enough talking, let's see how this thing drives. Stop. I don't think they running at my pace. Jordan wants, gotta keep them late. What is that? Mm, what is that? Circuit. Oh, what? What? the f Lime rocks in there? That is gangster. They're all East Coast tracks. Cool. What is this again? And grin shift. So long story short, what it does, it gives you 20 seconds of increased performance. Once you apply it, you'll get a countdown. And for that 20 seconds, it has increased performance. So it's like Mario Kart, essentially. And this, and button. Yeah, that's your other, so you have your two factory presets that mm. you can set. You can do one as like your daily driving comfort mode. And then the other one is like your full sport mode or, or whatever you want to preset all of those features to. Nice. Yeah. Here we are, we're about to do the stock zero to 60s. Yeah, so the first step to testing zero to 60 is setting up launch control. First, we are gonna put the car into full sport mode with traction control off. This uh, owner of the vehicle already has this preset already set up in his N mode. Um, this is the N1 mode, which is gonna be the left button on the steering wheel at the end. Okay. So you're gonna tap it once and then you're gonna hold it now until the traction control comes off. All right. Awesome, now it's off. We are gonna go into our end mode on the center dash screen, mm -hmm. and then we are going to slide over and select launch control and turn it to active. Oh shoot. And now you're good to put it in drive. All right. And then use your left foot on the brake, and right. then hold the gas down and you're good to go. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Did you get that? Yeah. All right. 6.6. .6. What did you think once it actually activated though? Well, it was pretty nice though and it sounded really cool, but I didn't get the actual like pull that I will get like on other cars. Yeah, definitely. As a passenger, um, it had a pretty good like launch sensation. The noise was definitely cool um, when it did activate launch control, kind of a two-step. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the launch itself, it spun first gear a little bit, um, and it, it felt good. Uh, as a passenger, it always feels a little bit better than as a driver. Yeah. Um, but I think there's definitely a lot of room for improvement. And in addition to uh, to everything with this testing, we do have three people in the car. We've got our camera guy, Danny, in the back. Um, so it is pretty weighted down for a, a, a two liter four cylinder car, but at all in all, it is pretty impressive. Um, and the car, I think, feels pretty good. All right, stand up. So that was basically six seconds flat. Oh, yeah. So Yuri, out of a handful of runs that we did, 
our top zero to 60 in this car was uh, basically 6.08 seconds. Uh, so yeah, super close to six seconds flat. I think factory, this car is rated just a little over five seconds, zero to 60 in like absolute perfect condition. Um, keep in mind in this car, um, we were driving it and putting quite a bit of driving time in before we did these tests. This is a turbo car, so we definitely were suffering from heat soak. Um, that's gonna be the main denominator on this result. The second biggest denominator on this is going to be our launch RPM. Um, we opted to test at the max launch RPM of 60, or I'm sorry, of 3,500 RPM. And with that, uh, as shown in our videos, we did get quite a bit of wheel spin in first gear, um, which is a loss of traction. So I think if we kind of played with that and dialed it in, we could definitely get into the high to low, I'm sorry, high to mid five second range. So from here, we are going to get the Elantra N pulled in on our Mustang Dyno. Um, we're gonna start out by running some stock baselines to see what this thing can do and where it comes in. From there, we are gonna get into uh, the physical install of our tuning box. And then once that's all installed and ready to go, we are going to run our tuned runs um, to see what kind of numbers we can basically create with this. And from there, you guys will basically see what this car is capable of um, with some basic tuning. We have just wrapped up our initial baseline with the Elantra N. Um, these are our stock figures, no tuning box applied. Vehicle is coming in at roughly 267 wheel horsepower and 285 foot pounds of torque. This is pretty good. Um, I'm definitely pleased to see this. This obviously is a DCT model. Um, when comparing this to the Civic Type R, which is obviously another very, very popular front wheel drive turbo application, it's relatively close. Uh, torque numbers are almost identical. However, this guy's down roughly 15 wheel horsepower, 15 to 20 wheel horsepower from what we've seen across the board on our Civic Type R's that we have tested. However, those Civic Type R's are manual transmissions, so we are obviously gonna experience less drivetrain loss on those. Um, with that being said, I'm pretty pleased to see these results for the Elantra N, and I'm definitely excited to see what we can do with our VR Tune V2 tuning box. Starting out, we are going to remove the engine cover. It does not require any tools. You simply pull and pop it up out of its rubber grommets. So we are gonna be targeting two sensors uh, on the engine itself. The first one is gonna be the MAP sensor, Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor. This guy's really easy to access. It's right here on top. It's got a simple harness that you're gonna go ahead and press down on and then pull out to remove. From there, we are gonna move on to our boost pressure sensor. This one's a little bit more difficult to get to, but really not too bad. This is gonna be located just underneath your top radiator hose alongside of the airbox. It's actually an identical sensor and harness to the map sensor. So same exact process. You're going to go ahead and push down on the tab and pull out. And again, this guy's located straight down onto the charge pipe before the throttle body. With the tuning box removed from its package, um, first we're going to start out with going over the harness. However, I do want to just go over some physical features of the actual tuning box itself. This guy is fully water resistant. Um, it's actually a really robust unit. So we get a lot of questions about like, will it have water damage? Uh, does it put up to engine? bay temperatures, things like that. The answer is yes. It is obviously developed to be mounted in the engine bay. However, um, you know, using some common sense, it is typically suggested to get this, you know, in the best location that's going to keep it away from heat and of course, direct water. With that being said, in terms of actually using this unit, this is a Bluetooth unit. So we really won't be using the two buttons on the screen itself um, or the screen because we're going to be changing all of our settings through our Bluetooth app. However, if you want to save a little bit of money, actually 50 bucks to be exact, you can opt out of the Bluetooth option and and just get the standard unit that will allow you to change between the seven modes uh, with the two buttons on the actual screen itself. Moving away from that, we are gonna get into physically installing our harness itself. Here you can see with the harness, we've got two main leads. We've got an A that's gonna go to our manifold absolute pressure sensor, and we've got a B that's gonna go to our boost pressure sensor. From here, essentially, you just wanna kinda get this thing laid out in the direction that you're gonna route it. Again, this is gonna depend on where you're gonna put the tuning box. There are a lot of options on this model. We're gonna get this guy over here on the driver's side corner, uh, actually by the factory ECU and fuse box. There's a lot of good spots back in here um, to get it mounted fairly low and out of the way, um, and it'll also keep it away from the heat. So starting out, we are going to get the uh, female end that is gonna be plugging into the tuning box. First, we are gonna remove the jumper plug. 
The jumper plug here basically just routes all of this back to stock, completely original settings. It bypasses the tuning box, so in the event you want to troubleshoot, uh, you know, any issues with the car or check engine lights or something like that, and just ensure that it is not the tuning box creating that, you can plug this jumper in and it'll literally plumb the entire thing back to stock. So we're gonna go ahead and route this guy underneath the intake, the main tube itself that goes uh, to the turbo. We're gonna run it back and come along over here to where the ECU is. And we're just gonna let this rest loose. We're not gonna tie anything up yet. We'll do that at the end once we know exactly how we're gonna route all the wiring. From there, we are going to move on to our manifold absolute pressure sensor. Simply push down and pull out. You can see we've got the male end here. So we're gonna take the male end of the T on the uh, VR tune harness right here and simply plug it in as you would the factory. And then from there, we are going to plug in the male end of the connector, factory connector into our connector here. Now we are going to move down to the turbo boost pressure sensor. It's gonna to be tough to see in the video. However, you can just simply reach your hand down there and then feel for the release itself. Again, this guy is going to plug in just like the other one did. All right, now that we've got both sensors completely plugged into our VR Tune V2 tuning box harness, it is now time to uh, tie up the wires. Um, our packaging does include a handful of zip ties. And in terms of routing these, again, we really like to follow uh, uh, factory harnesses and things like that that are going towards the direction that you are going to mount the box. This is going to keep it super clean. It's also going to keep the wires from getting tangled up in any moving components. And it looks good. That wraps up our quick install of the VR Tune V2 tuning box. We've got it mounted in an awesome spot. It looks great and it's going to stay safe in that corner. Now it is time to test our tuned runs and see what this thing can do. Our tuned runs are complete with our VR Tune V2 tuning box. We did test at the highest setting. This is setting seven and the vehicle is on 91 octane. Keep in mind, it is roughly 95 degrees here in our dyno room. We are in Phoenix, Arizona, so it is pretty toasty. However, our results are fantastic. We have uh, initially picked up roughly 58 wheel horsepower and 55 foot pounds of torque. This thing is now coming in at 321 wheel horsepower and 340 foot pounds of torque. This is obviously a substantial improvement. I can tell you right now, just feeling power come in on the dyno and boost come in, it is significantly more noticeable and sensationable than the stock settings. So it's definitely gonna provide a lot more fun, whether you're out on the streets, just driving to work and having a good time, or if you're out on the track for the weekends. All right, now that we've got the data and we've seen what this thing can do, it is time to get the Elantra N unstrapped from our dyno and out on the street so we can do some more testing with Iori. So within the Bluetooth app, we actually have three different preset features, a race, sport, and eco. Uh, within that, you can actually go to fine tuning and you can set which each one of those modes is. Um, on race, we have it set to full tilt. That's number seven, which is the highest setting. From there, we have kind of something in the middle, sport, uh, which is number five, and then an eco, which is number three. In addition to those as well, we have a warm-up timer that we can set. The warm-up timer is gonna kind of work like an old school uh, turbo timer. And in this feature itself, you can, once the ignition is keyed on, the box will not become active until whatever time you set it to. So most people set it to about three minutes or two and a half minutes or whatever to get the car up to running temperature before the peak boost is increased. Wow, so eco mode, do you, does that affect fuel efficiency? It can, yeah. yeah. So you can turn it down, um, which will basically reduce throttle input, um, which can help with uh, with fuel economy, of course. Um, obviously, most people are not using this for that, but yeah. <laughs> it is there. Um, and then another cool thing that you can do with the app that you can't do without is you can simply turn the tuning box directly on and off. Um, oh, wow. So right now it's completely deactivated. Um, the vehicle is running 100% stock software um, and stock performance. And then with the touch of a button, you are back to the race setting number seven. All right, we are ready to test the zero to 60 with the VR2 and tuning box installed. Um, we are gonna do the same exact process in the same exact spot that we tested it originally. Um, Eori is driving once again, and so we are going to uh, get our foot on the brake, swat our gas down quickly, um, and let it launch from the same RPM that we previously tested from.
is fun at least. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you think so far? I think that it definitely makes a lot more torque with the tuning box applied. You can obviously tell that from the tracks that the car's laying down. We are playing with launch control a lot more to try to counter the torque and how much wheel spin it's producing. But yeah, it obviously looks like it's a lot more fun to drive. All right, we have wrapped up our zero to 60 testing with the tuning box applied. Uh, we are right off the bat producing roughly half a second, zero to 60, a little bit over half a second. Um, it definitely feels a lot better. The issue with testing zero to 60 on this car um, is definitely getting it to make traction. Um, it's a front wheel drive car. It is making 340 foot pounds of torque now. Um, so we've got a lot of wheel spin. Um, we spent quite a bit of time playing with the different uh, launch RPM ranges. Obviously, it does considerably better lowering that from what we initially tested stock. Um, however, all in all, we are experiencing about a half a second, zero to 60. Um, I think the real test, which we're not going to do based on our limited space, would be 60 to 100. I think that's really where you'd see a, a much larger gain with the tuning box applied. Um, however, I will say, and I think Iori would agree, just driving around and coming into boost, the car is much more aggressive. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, as a passenger, I can definitely tell um, when we do initially launch, it puts your seat or your head back in the seat considerably more. Um, and overall, it definitely feels a lot more. Oh yeah, I completely agree. Like I've driven like all the JDM like sports cars, like performance cars, and I kind of felt like it was so close to FK8 uh, Type R. Oh. Yeah, so I was pretty surprised about that. Yeah, and I definitely agree with you. Um, the FK8 Type R is my favorite FF front wheel drive platform um, that I've driven in my years since I've been at Vivid Racing. Um, I really enjoy it, and this car I feel a lot of similarities to. Obviously, manual transmission in the Type R, DCT in this version of the Elantra N. Um, that creates some differences, um, but in the way that these cars make power, and then if you even look at their dyno graphs uh, as we overlaid them, and we might be able to uh, kind of show you guys a, a preview of that overlay, they are very similar. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think this is a fantastic car, um, especially for the uh, the budget, and we're definitely excited to do more with it. Oh yeah, it's gonna make a great daily with a little bit of pizzazz. Yes, absolutely <laughs> pizzazz with the pizzazz. salt bay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, that wraps up our testing and fun with the all-new Elantra N. The car produced some pretty awesome results that we're definitely excited about. If you'd like to learn more, check it out on vividracing.com. For any questions, you can always contact us at tuning at vividracing.com. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next one.